like, all right. Today's a special day if you didn't know it. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say we should sing a special song on special days. Um, so I, I'm going to start it kind of happy right there. And we'll sing happy birthday to grandma. Amen. <laughs> we won't say how old she is. <laughs> old. <laughs> Let's sing happy birthday. No, why not? Huh? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday. Aww. Happy birthday. <laughs> and she has an exciting day tomorrow. The ladies' Christmas party at her house that she has. So that's going to be a good time. But grab your Bibles with me this evening. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. We'll look at a couple verses and just kind of uh, some things that were laid on my heart. Luke chapter number 2. All right, we're going to read verses 6 and verse 7 in Luke chapter number 2. It says this, And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Let's pray, and then we'll get into this this evening. Lord, again, we're just thankful to be here tonight. Lord, I pray that you direct my thoughts and my words this evening. I pray whatever I say is just directly from you. Lord, as we kind of pick apart uh, um, just the idea and the, the thoughts that you laid on my heart uh, regarding uh, kind of this topic, but uh, different areas that we could look at in a story like this. Lord, thank you so much uh, for Christmas. Again, we'll echo that prayer throughout this month, Lord, but just all year long, I just can't help but think, Lord, just what a tremendous gift that was to us. Lord, you sending your son to die for us. Thank you so much for that. Lord, be with our time uh, now in your word. We ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight, I, I was thinking about the Christmas story. It's that time of year and all of the, 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 the different things that go into it. And uh, I know that all of us are familiar and yeah, you'll hear me say it throughout the weeks ahead, just the wrapping of presents and the putting up of decorations, the lights and everything that goes into Christmas. We'll be thinking of that. But as you really look at the Christmas story, right, uh, leading into the verses that we read is when, uh, uh, well, we can read it. Verse one, it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus to all the world should be taxed. And this tax, uh, taxing was the first made when uh, Cyrenius was governor over Syria and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. We're familiar with uh, uh, Mary and the angel appearing to her and saying, you will conceive, you will bring forth a child and how great this holy thing that will be done unto you is. And we can read that in Luke 1 and uh, how uh, John the Baptist played into that and they, they met and the babe left and all the excitement and now they're on their way, they're traveling and we understand as they're coming into town, she is huge. I mean, she, she's ready to pop. Right? Not only is she ready to pop, but she just traveled on donkey, we'll say. Right? I mean, she, she just got there. That baby's been shaken, stirred, and it's ready to pour, right? It's coming. Okay, so, so here it is. And as we're getting here, all of the things that I could imagine going through her mind, through Joseph's mind, every aspect of this moment, this season of their life, they didn't know it was Christmas yet. Right? We look back, this is the Christmas story. To them, it was just Friday. 
or whatever day it was. It was tax season to them. It was April 15th. Right, so, so here they are and they're, they're coming in for the taxing, right? All the world should be taxed. So, okay, honey, let's go. You know, as we're dealing with the, the busyness and all the excitement this year and we're thinking uh, along the birth of Christ, along what Christmas truly is, you know, this story is so encouraging because verse number seven, she brought forth her firstborn son. He, he came. He showed up. Right? God in human flesh was born unto Mary. I mean, she delivered. She brought him forth. He was here finally. We can think of God's presence. This thought kept popping in my, my mind over the past two weeks. I was actually wrestling with this as one of my points for the sermon that I might have preached Sunday morning. God's presence over our presence. Right, think of that. This, this time of year, we focus on what's under the tree. The presence. Right, we, we, we want to unwrap those. I enjoy, well, I enjoy giving them. Wrapping them, it's kind of, it's not fun, okay? But I wrap them. Why? Because if I don't, they will not look very good. Because my wife just doesn't wrap presents. She tells me, you need to wrap the presents because if she does, it'll just be like, and at least I can kind of crease the edges a little bit, right? <laughs> right, but, but when we're really thinking about this, see, think of God's presence over the presence, right? Man, we, we can think of all of the good things that Christmas brings, but honestly, I mean, this was not Christmas to them. This was just a birthday for Christ to Mary. He was here. It, it wasn't about a present. It wasn't about anything. It was about the presence of the baby. Christ, Jesus Christ is now here. Thank God. He, he came, and I'm sure Mary was saying, after the baby was born, thank you, Lord. <laughs> we, we've done it. We've survived nine months. But we got to focus on the presence of God. You know, in the presence of God, that's where we get our joy. That, that's where our joy comes from. In Psalms chapter number 16, it puts it very plainly to us. In verse number 11, it says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Man, you know, I, I think of presents, opening presents. As a, as a child, even into your adult years, as I've, I've mentioned, you, you always think and you always hold on to, you, you remember certain presents. You do. Right? I mean, ladies, maybe you remember when you received that special present on your finger. Doesn't have to be Christmas. We're just talking about presents here. Okay? That's not a present. That's a proposal. No, that's a present. I could have asked you to marry me without a ring. I could have. All the ladies are like, <laughs> yeah, right. No, I, I mean, I could have. Right? I, I mean, we could have. But we understand, it, it, it means something. There's meaning behind this gift. There, 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 there's a purpose to it. Every present that you give to people, oftentimes you will put some thought in. Right, your little one running around, you know what, he's gonna love this animal, even though he hates animals, he wants cars. No, you, you know what they like, so you, you think about, or, or you know what they need, and, and you focus on that, and that present is typically on purpose. Right, so, so you think about what goes into it, and you wrap it, and you present it, saying this is exactly what you're gonna need, and really it's probably something that you're gonna want. 
In this time of year, it's so important that even though you might start to see wrapped things showing up under Christmas trees, we really need to focus not just on the present, but on his presence. Because his presence, he came, right? It was so that while, uh, while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. It was time, and she brought forth her son. Instead of focusing on the presence, remember the joy, the, the sweet, blessed joy. Well, how tremendous his presence is. Because I can guarantee you, it's something you need. And as a Christian, it should be something that you want. You, you should be constantly desiring to feel God's presence on your life. How important that truly is. How, how needful that truly is. In Psalms 139, verses 7 and 8, it says that, let me read it really quick. Psalms 139, 7 and 8. It says, whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? It says, if I ascend up to, into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold... Thou art there. This, this, this is a, a reminder to us as, as we're uh, filled with the idea of presence this season, as we're filled with everybody trying to push in, you need to buy this for so-and-so. You need to get this for so-and-so. Listen, we are Christians, hopefully on purpose. You, you asked Christ, you received Christ. What a tremendous gift that was, Amen. But you received him, and now there's presence in with you always, and we should desire to feel that presence, not, not uh, callousing ourselves, not, not feeding our fleshly side. And Psalms 139 just reminds us, where are you going to go? You can't escape the presence of God. What a tremendous blessing that is as a Christian. You know, as a, as a kid, sometimes you're like, Dad, just go away. Right? I, I don't want you here. I'm going to get out of your presence. I, I'm going to leave. I, I want you to stay over there. I'm going to go hide over here, and I'm going to do whatever I want to do out of the sight of my dad or my mom or my guardian, whatever your situation is. So, so when we're thinking of Psalms 139, where are you going to go, Christian, out of the presence of God? Well, God, you stay here. And while I go and do what I want to do over here, no, I'm with you always. Always I'm with you. Focus on God's presence over the presence this year. You know, Luke 2, 6, and 7, it, it's so nice looking at the Christmas story, kind of how Christ came to be in that road of him arriving here on this earth for us. I can imagine the problems that they faced. We read about them. I mean, they had to flee cities. They had to travel, right? They, they couldn't just hop in the, the, the car and drive to Bethlehem. They, they had to get there on foot, on donkey, right? They, they had to get there nine months pregnant. They, they had problems. They had issues. Not only were they worried about the travel when they got there, they had to pay taxes. That's a problem, I mean, they were dealing with all of these things. Where are we going to sleep? Undoubtedly, at times, what are we going to eat? Right? Uh, how are we going to stay warm? What, what are we going to do? What are the steps that we're going to take? Uh, are we in danger? Right? Those aren't safe roads traveling from town to town in those times. Uh, is it going to be okay? And how easy it is for us, not only to, to get excited about things under the tree, but we like to focus on the problems of this time of year. Oh, this time of year is great. It's such a blessing. It is. But how often do you complain about it? Because it's very easy too. I got to figure out how to get to the mall and pick this up and get this and go here. And did you see gas prices? Oh, you got to be kidding me. And all of the problems like to just bubble out of us. Hey, I do it. I can't believe. Right? Oh, I can't believe what's going on. I can't. And we focus on the problems and it could have been so easy 
But you know, I don't see written in scripture where it says, and Joseph of Mary bickered about their situation they were in. Joseph and Mary were upset about what had taken place. Joseph cussed out the innkeeper because he couldn't fill his reservation. No, no, we, we don't see that. All that we see is, and so it was, that while they were there, after they came back to town, after they showed back up, that she should, the days were accomplished, that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. You know, those swaddling clothes, those, those were strips of, of fabric that the mothers would wrap their children in for warmth, but also it was a very sense of protection for them. Right? That, that's why uh, babies, right after they're born, they, they teach you in the hospital, right? And this is how you swaddle, right? And they're like, and the baby's like, I can't move anything, right? Why? Because it feels safe to them. Right, so, so maybe this time of year, as we're focusing on his presence over the presence, we should be focusing on God's protection over his problem, over our problems. Right, we should be focusing on his protection. What a, what a mighty God we serve. What, what, what an amazing God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 91.1 says. Hey, as you are a Christian, right? Uh, under that protective shadow. I remember I had a very good friend in, in sixth, no. Yep, sixth grade. <laughs> It's been a while. Okay, so here's sixth grade. And I remember uh, my uh, sixth grade picture, seventh grade pictures, eighth grade pictures. It was other boy, other boy, other boy, me, other boy, other boy. I was just tall, right? I've mellowed out in my height. Okay, but I, I was just a tall young man. I was skinny, but I was wiry. Okay, so I remember I had a, a small friend and, and uh, we were in a home ec class. I was just talking to somebody earlier. They don't really do those types of classes anymore. They don't teach anything. <laughs> okay, so, so here I was and, and I was in this class and a good friend of mine was getting bullied. Right, and he was getting picked on. And I just remember I got pretty upset and I stood up. And like I said, I was at least a head over all the other boys. And this boy was bullying him and I just walked up behind him. And he just turned around and he was about right here. And I just remember that moment, he's like. Right, and it was just one of those moments where I'm like, yeah, you know. I, nothing came of it, thankfully, because I would have probably cried and went home. And I'm just teasing. <laughs> No, but what happens, right? That, that shadow, oh, overshadowing of somebody. Man, what a, what a sense of protection that can be, right? A young man uh, or a little kid and, and thinking of dad and just that protectiveness of the big dad. Man, how great this is. In the face of every problem as a child. Oh, my dad will beat up your dad. Right? Oh, my dad's stronger than anybody. My dad's greater than anybody. Why? Because there's that overshadowing. I, I, I can handle anything that you're going to face. I, I, I can help you through any situation. I will be there for you to help you, to protect you. Don't worry about your problems. I'm overseeing it. Don't, don't worry about the frustrations. I'm right here with you. John 16, 33 puts it good, doesn't it? It says, these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. Ye might have peace. Why are we able to have peace? In the world ye shall have tribulation. You're going to have the troubles. You're going to have the problems. You're, you're, you're going to be upset, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I'm overseeing your situation. I, I've got it under control. My, my, my shadow is, is over it all. I, you're you're going to be okay. So man, as, as we think of the Christmas story, how Christ truly came and we can focus, man, he came, his presence. 
But think of God's protection. Man, what a tremendous blessing it is to know that God's my buckler. He is my fortress. He's my strong tower. He, he is mighty. This Christmas, maybe, maybe we do need to f- focus on God's peace over some presumptions. I looked up the definition of presumptions because I like to look up definitions. My wife has a picture of me reading the dictionary. I don't even know why I was reading the dictionary. We had this giant dictionary. I think we used it as a weight for something when we had our last house. And I just remember she was, she's like, I'm going to take your picture. And I just opened it up and went, hmm. Very studious. (laughs) That was in the dictionary. All right, but presumption, right? Our, Our presumption is an idea that is taken to be true. Right? It's often used as the basis for other ideas, although it is not known for certain. You ever presume some things? You, you know how, how often our presumptions lead to us not having peace about situations? Well, if I do this, so-and-so is going to think this. Well, 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 well if, I, if I make this stance, then, then so-and-so's gonna, gonna act that way. If I, if I do this, then how in the world are we gonna be able to do this? And we presume, and, 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 we, and we think, and, and we make this idea, and we make it true in our minds and we use it uh, to, to build on our lives and, and our lifestyles. And the next step that we take is based off of just an idea about what might happen. Even though it is not known for certain. There, there, there's always those uh, in TV shows and movies and things and the dad's driving is like, you're lost, aren't you? I'm not lost. You, you don't know where you, oh, no, I know exactly where we're going. Why don't you just ask for directions? No, nope, I'm not going to do it. You know what I do? I ask for directions because I don't care. <laughs> right? I go to a store. I don't know where something is. I'm not going to wander to the store and be like, where was that thing? No, I'm going to find somebody and say, where is it? Right? I'm not, I'm not going to presume that I can just figure it out, right? I, I'm not, I'm not going to presume, right? And, and she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Well, I can't give birth in there. Well, I, I can't do this. I can't travel there. I, I can't make this happen. Lord, I, I can't carry your child. I can't, I can't, I can't. And they're presuming things. I'm so thankful that trusting in God, knowing who God is, brings peace to our lives if we choose to allow it. I, I'm, I'm so thankful for the peace of God. I'm thankful for who God is and how he works. And even when I think certain things, we we, we should all have examples of, Lord, I don't know how this is going to work out, Lord. I've, I've heard of other people who have gone through similar things and this is what happens to them. I, I, I've seen other people who have, have struggled in this area and I know what happens to them and Lord, that's just where I'm going to end up. He says, peace. I'm with you. I, I've already overcome it all. I, I'm with you. I, I, your presence, God's presence is with us. God's protection is with me. If I am with God and I know that he's protecting me, man, I am sleeping good tonight. Or at least I should be. What a tremendous God. We serve Exodus 33, verse number 14. It says, and he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. That peace. That, 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 that understanding. Man, uh, Moses was, was taken uh, um, 
right? The Ten Commandments and all of that story. And uh, he came down and the Ten Commandments broke and the golden calf and all of those issues. And God's like, I just want to see you, God. I just want to uh, see your face. I just want to spend time with you, talk to you. And he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee peace. I'm going to be with you. I, I'm gonna, I am going to uh, uh, continually guide you and instruct you and, and help you. I am going to be there. I will give you rest. That sweet peace. Even when we get to a point, presumption, it is behavior perceived as arrogant, disrespectful, and transgressing. The, the limits of what is permitted or appropriate. Right? When we presume things, especially in our lives as Christians, especially around seasons such as this, when we're thinking about Christmas and all the excitement, and I'm going to presume things about how God wants me to live. God, God wants me to spend time with family, so I don't have to go to church. Just an example. God, God would want me to do this, so I'm not going to give like he expects me to. Well, God, God would understand if, if I don't pray uh, as much as, as maybe I should, because, well, it's a busy time of year. You know what presumption is? I just read it. It's behavior that is perceived as arrogant. It, it, it's disrespectful. Transgressing the limits of what is permitted or appropriate. How often do we do that during the holidays, especially? We make excuses for us not living the life that we're supposed to. We, we, we make excuses, and what does that lead to? Problems. Instead of focusing on the protection and the guidance that God gives. And what do our problems do? Man, they, they, they help us focus, focus right on what is immediate and right in front of us. When I'm dealing with problems, man, all I want to focus on is something good. Some, something that might bring me joy, like a, a present. Man, this, this time of year, I, I hope that as uh, Christmas is approaching, one, I, I hope that you're keeping Christ at the center of your season. I, I hope you are uh, teaching and, and praying and, and reading your Bible, and I, I hope that you're, you're focusing truly on who God is in your life. Focus on his presence. Man, what a tremendous blessing. Focus on his protection. Man, God's with me. Why, why am I worried uh, about this situation? God's got it under control. And when I understand that, man, the peace of God is so powerful. It's a blessing. That, that is a true gift. What a tremendous thing that we have access to through our salvation. Right? Who God is in your life. And it was so that while they were there, as they were living life, doing, doing their day to day, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Time had come, and she brought forth her firstborn son. He came, guys. He came, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I love the next story, but we won't get into it tonight when the shepherds are out there and the angel appears. I like verse number 20 in Luke chapter number two, and it says, and the shepherds returned. They heard from the angels. They, they, they went and sought out Mary and Joseph. They, they saw the child, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Man, this, this time of year, I, I hope that you focus on your salvation, who God is in your life. And I hope that you can go about your day-to-day -day life glorifying and praising God for all the things that you've heard and seen that he has done. What does he, what does he do? He offers his presence to us, his protection and his peace. 
Praise God this season, amen? What a tremendous time of year Christmas is because maybe it can really help us focus on who Christ is. Let's pray, and then we'll take up some prayer requests tonight. Lord, thank you so much for who you are. Lord, and I pray, uh, especially for this time of year, Lord, as people uh, are uh, seemingly busier and things uh, do at times become more stressful, planning uh, for family and planning for meals and planning for gifts and planning for uh, even church, Lord, programs and, and different activities, Lord, I pray that we focus on who you are more than anything. Lord, help us as your church to lift you up that when other people come into this church, they see you in us. They see how we glorify and honor you and we help turn people towards you this season. What a tremendous gift that would be to see someone saved. Lord, thank you so much for everything you bless us with. Be with this time of prayer in Jesus' name, amen.